Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. My name's Brian. We talk about Blu-rays here. Today we're talking about 4Ks, and we're talking about one of my favorite directors, uh, Mr. John Frankenheimer. And he's done a ton of great films. Uh, throughout his career, it's been, I don't know, he's just one of those guys that is a real craftsman on a level that I've always appreciated. Uh, a couple of my personal favorites are The Train with Burt Lancaster and Seconds with uh, Rock Hudson. Both of those I find to be, you know, just fantastic. One is a World War II thriller, kind of, uh, about a, a big train full of um, uh, great artwork that some Nazis are trying to steal. And then uh, the other one is about a man who has his identity changed and then starts to have regrets. And it's kind of almost like a Twilight Zone episode. Those are just fantastic. Uh, available on Blu-ray from Kino and Criterion, respectively. Is there a 4K for the train? I don't know if there's a 4K yet. I'm blanking. But anyway, today we're talking about some new and some old Frankenheimer. Uh, I'm going to start with the new because it's pretty exciting, and that is Ronin. Uh, and Ronin is from 1998. It is a really cool international production, a thriller, uh, with some incredible chases. Um, how do they uh, describe... Oops. Got some loose discs here, folks. This is dangerous stuff. Um, this, by the way, comes with a Blu-ray and a 4K. And most of the features are going to be found on the Blu-ray. But um, they describe it as an end-of-career masterpiece from John Frankenheimer, the legendary director of The Manchurian Candidate. We'll talk about that in a second. The Train, Seconds, and Grand Prix. Oh, I love Grand Prix. That's also fantastic with James Garner. Really incredible movie about racing, really inventive photography. I think that's one of the things I love about Frankenheimer. He's just a very stylish guy and also brings a realism to the work that he's doing that's, I don't know, pretty remarkable. Um, let's see here. Ronin is a gritty and gripping action caper with some of the most exhilarating car chases ever committed to celluloid. The Cold War may be over, but a new world keeps a group of covert mercenaries employed by the highest bidder. These operatives for hire, known as Ronin, masterless samurai, are assembled in France by a mysterious client for a seemingly routine mission, steal a top-secret briefcase. But the simple task soon proves to be explosive, as the underworld organizations vie for the same prize. And to get the job done, the Ronin must do something they've never done before, trust each other. The illustrious international cast includes Robert De Niro, Jean Reno. Natasha McElhone, Stellan Skarsgård, Sean Bean, Michael Lonsdale, and Jonathan Price. Um, and it is quite a cast. Um, and uh, this is a brand new HDR Dolby Vision Master from a 4K scan of the original camera negative, the words we love to hear. Uh, and yeah, it's just really, really well done. It's a two-hour, just over two-hour film, but it's just really well-paced. In a way that I, you know, hugely appreciate. And the way the characters are introduced is very cool. It's a really great latter career performance from De Niro. I think it's one of his best that he's done since the, um, I don't know, you know, since his heyday, really. I mean, it's, it's one of the great later performances that he gave. And I'm hoping he still has a few more like this in him, but... It's a it's a really great movie in terms of the setup, and it's got a great MacGuffin. I mean, it's literally a briefcase. We, I don't think we ever find out what is in the briefcase. Maybe it comes out at the end. I don't I don't remember, but it's a case. It's just a classic like thing to drive the plot forward. And so we have this group of mercenaries. They all sort of have specialties, um, and De Niro is kind of sort of taking a front seat, but also kind of like, I'm going to look out for myself, as he should. Uh, but he and John Reno work really well together, and um, yeah, it's it's really great. Natasha McAlhone plays the sort of 
uh, agent for the boss that's hired them. And there is definitely a question as to like, what are her loyalties? And there's a lot of uh, intrigue, if you will. But yeah, car chases, top notch. Uh, David Mamet worked on the script. So it's just really great uh, sparse dialogue in some cases, but in some cases very clever and sharp exchanges. Um, Yeah, it's just a really good, you know, espionage adjacent kind of thriller and yeah the car chases are i i had thought there was just one but there's like two or three car chases in the movie and they kind of get progressively um better you know and they start really good uh i'll, I'll get to the the uh stunt coordinator driver guy that they're using but he's a french uh stunt guy and he works on a lot of films that get made in France but there's some great international credits that he has and these films have great car chases in them as well so I'll get to that in a minute but uh looks really sharp looks lovely in this new 4k HDR transfer and um it's got most of the extras that you would have there was an Arrow Blu-ray which I had and I'll go through what it's missing but it has most of the extras uh that that disc has And you're just missing a couple things. Um, But the commentary by Frankenheimer, which, you know, I think a lot of these extras are being ported over from previous releases, including that Aero Disc. We're getting a couple of the, or one or two of the extras that were for that Aero Disc. But a lot of these might be coming from a special edition Blu ray or DVD that came out um, years ago now. So there's not a ton of new stuff, but what's there is really solid. starting with the John Frankenheimer commentary, he gives a really good commentary on any movie that they've provided a commentary from him. Uh, He tends to be a little sparse in some of his comments, but when he does speak, he makes sure that it's, you know, he, he speaks about interesting stuff. He has good stories about the filmmaking, good stories about the actors, and it's just a very matter-of-fact, nuts-and-bolts kind of guy. and I, So I love his commentaries. Um, this is a good one. Uh, then in terms of interviews, we have close-up and interview with cinematographer Robert Frace. That's about 31 minutes and 28 seconds. That's from the Arrow Blu-ray. So you just 30 minutes plus of talking to him about how he shot this movie and sort of a, the beginnings of his career and that kind of stuff. Very nice. Uh, and then the rest are all from, I think, a previous uh, Ronin release, a Blu-ray or what have you. Um, uh, In the Ronin Cutting Room with editor Tony Gibbs, that's about 19 minutes. Uh, You know, again, him talking about his process and his um, sort of ideas for the film and what he did. Uh, Very enjoyable stuff. Uh, An actor's process with Natasha McElhone, that's about 14 minutes. Again, her talking about her memories of the... I mean, it looks like she's still on the... It's like a press junket kind of thing. She's still on the production. So some of it is dealing with um, working with this cast, trying not to be intimidated by some of these actors, but how that sometimes actually plays into this character who, in terms of the plot, would be a little nervous about these guys and dealing with them. And so she's allowing her apprehensions about the actors or her self-consciousness to become part of the character, which I think is a great way to do it. Um, composing the Ronin score with Ilya Kmural, uh, 1153, again, speaking about the score there. Driving of Ronin with stunt car coordinator Jean-Claude Lagniez. Now, he's the French guy. He's This is 15 and a half minutes. It's in French with English subtitles. He started way back on Condor Man, which is a big favorite of mine. And if you remember Condor Man, it actually has some really great driving sequences. There's some, there's a group of black Porsches. um, They're part of this Russian KGB thing called the Proknoviach and they drive in formation and it's great, like great stunt driving there. Um, But then he would go on to work steadily, mostly on French films, but also things like View to a Kill, then Ronin, Born Identity, and Mission Impossible Fallout. And if you think about it, all those films have some good car chase sequences somewhere. 
Um, so interesting to hear about, you know, how he approaches, you know, his gig. And then we have uh, Through the Lens with cinematographer Robert Frace, another interview uh, with him that's about 18 minutes. And then the Venice Film Festival with Robert De Niro, Natasha Calhoun, and Jean Reno, about 20, 21 minutes. These are individual interviews with each of the actors and each of them speaking about, you know, it's kind of a m- more junkety. So they're talking about the film. They're talking about working with Frankenheimer, working with each other. Uh, and then some of these interviews are repurposed for the next thing, which is Ronan filming in the Fast Lane featurette, which is a 17-minute, 40-second 46 second piece that's more or less a making of type thing where you have a sort of general approach to this material and you're speaking to the producer director and the actors again some of the De Niro footage is recycled from that other uh, piece but it's integrated well into this making of and getting uh, Frankenheimer on camera Uh, and there's also an alternate ending as well so the only thing you're missing If you have the Arrow Blu-ray, is there's a thing called You Talking to Me, and this is a 1994 appreciation of Robert De Niro by Quentin Tarantino, and it's about 27 minutes. Um, But it's obviously a very young Tarantino. It's 94. Lots of clips of De Niro in all kinds of movies from uh, Taxi Driver, Deer Hunter. Um, You know, he, he gives a broad look at to Nero's career and what he appreciates about it. It's great. Um, you can find some clips of it on YouTube, but you know, it's tough to know if you want to keep that Blu-ray just for that, or if you want to upgrade and sell it off, you know, it's your call, but that's the only thing that's missing from the arrow Blu-ray versus this release. So it's a pretty solid release all around in terms of extras. And like I said, a great transfer and a great movie. I really enjoyed the rewatch of Ronan. Now, one of the all-time classics from Mr. Frankenheimer, of course, is The Manchurian Candidate. And uh, this is a really remarkable movie. Um, it is from 1962. And this is a brand new HDR Dolby Vision Master from a 4K scan of the 35 original camera negative. Also looks really nice. This is a black and white film. But uh, the grain and the detail is just really wonderful. Uh, It is a really interesting movie. And Frankenheimer in the commentary, there's a commentary here as well, speaks about he himself having a pride in that it's a he sees it as the first movie to take on Senator Joe McCarthy uh, because there is a character like McCarthy in this film. But the basic idea is that we have a group of soldiers in the Korean War, they are abducted by, uh, you know, communist group of Korean soldiers and then brought to this brainwashing center and they are all brainwashed. And one of the most remarkable shots in all of cinema is a 360 degree shot that Frankenheimer pulls off that is so neat because basically the idea is that these soldiers return from the Korean War, and the story that they have in their heads is that the character, uh, this stars Frank Sinatra, Lawrence Harvey, Janet Lee, uh, Angela Lansbury, and Lawrence Harvey plays this character that is being heralded as a hero for having single-handedly, as the story goes, like taken out a machine gun nest or something and saved a bunch of soldiers, and he's being granted the Presidential Medal of Honor. But what you find out is that that's all sort of a trick and it's been set up by this communist group to get him close to the president. Now, there's a significance in that he is this medal winner, but his um, mom, played by Angela Lansbury, who was weirdly only a year older than him at the time, uh, but she pulls it off, um, and... Her, his sort of stepdad is like a Joe McCarthy type. Uh, so th- there's a weird connection there, and I won't go too much further into it, but the idea is that all these guys have this story in their head, but they all, the soldiers, including Sinatra and some of the others, are having this recurring nightmare of what actually happened, which is that they were brainwashed, 
and they were made to think that they were in a hotel lobby somewhere in the South, and they're just sitting in these chairs, bored, listening to this women's group talk about flowers. But what's really happening is that they're actually in a communist, um, almost like an amphitheater, like a like a it looks like a surgical amphitheater where there's like you know seats going up and all the group the folks are sitting there and there's a communist guy this bald dude that it's sort of the head of brainwashing and he's explaining to them what he's done and that he's made them think they're in this other place and that they you know obviously they're in this this communist place and he actually makes them do some things that are pretty horrible but they don't know that they're doing them and they don't understand what's happening because they still think they're in this lobby in this hotel. But one thing that's amazing is this 360 degree shot that Frankenheimer does that he explains a little bit in the commentary, but it's pulled off in part by having some sets that are on rails that can be slid. But basically the idea is we start on them in the, what they what subjectively in their head in this hotel lobby with these women around and one woman at the head of the table giving this speech about flowers they look very bored and we pan around and as we come around to the 360 basically what's happening is the set for the hotel lobby is slid out and the set for the communist amphitheater slid in and the actors run around the back and sit in the chairs where they look like they're basically in the same spot but now suddenly they're in this, you know, communist briefing and we see what's really happening. And then there's all the different points of view from the different soldiers, like the different soldiers remember things differently uh, from their own perspectives. And so they basically shot this scene like six different times from a bunch of different angles and they're able, it's just so well put together. Um, and apparently George Axelrod, the screenwriter, kind of came up with the, the this idea and how to do it and Frank and I were just kind of you know worked it out and made it really work and it's just chilling it's a really chilling opening to this movie and um, something you never forget and when you watch it that scene that shot every time you're like how did they do that it's just so incredible so anyway it starts with that and then it sort of builds to this very thrilling ending uh it's it's a it's a really remarkable movie and still ha- packs a punch even today, you know, far post Cold War because there's just something about it that's so eerie. It's almost like a horror movie in a way, um, in terms of the brainwashing and it has to do with cards, it has to do with solitaire, it has to do with just picking up a phone and being triggered like a sleeper cell. Um, but it is really a great great movie and like I said, looks really wonderful on this 4K now. We've got some features here, and uh, one of them is the audio commentary with Frankenheimer. This is another one that comes with uh, a, bl- a 4K and a special features disc. Um, in the case of Ronan, I should have noted that the Blu-ray includes the movie, uh, but on this one, I don't think the Blu-ray includes the movie. I think it's just the special features. It's labeled as special features. So if you want to listen to the commentary, you have to do it on the 4K. But the rest of uh, the features are on the Blu-ray. Um, and these are all ported from an old DVD release. Uh, unfortunately, they're not upgraded in really any way. So they're like 4x3, some of them, and they're you know 480. Um, but it's still really good stuff. I mean, a lot of these people are no longer with us, so it's really would be impossible to have um you know interviews with these people you have the first group is the manchurian candidate interviews with frank sinatra john frankenheimer and screenwriter george axelrod it's only about eight minutes but it's really neat to see the three of them together reminiscing about this movie um you know specific recollections from all of them including sinatra remembering what jfk had said about this movie and how he sounded like he was excited about it and all this. Um, but there's a lot of neat back and forth from them in just a short time. It's neat to, again, just to need to see all of them together. Uh, Queen of Diamonds, an interview with Angela Lansbury. That's 14 minutes, 51 seconds. Um, she talks about Frankenheimer selling her on the book and her part. And it's just a lovely 
she's a lovely woman and it's just great to hear her uh recollections of you know the film and some choices that she made and there's even an outtake later from her interview that's that's interesting as well uh a little solitaire with william friedkin that's 13 minutes and 17 seconds uh huge praise from william friedkin for frankenheimer who he calls the most important and innovative director of his meaning friedkin's generation i guess um he describes his work as documentary feeling and how it can feel really real while still being stylish, uh, especially Manchurian Candidate. And he had some a lot of things to say about the movie. He talked about Sinatra not doing second takes. Apparently, Sinatra was a big fan of, or his at least his approach to acting was to get that spontaneity of the first take. And he didn't like to go beyond that because that sort of spontaneity is gone after that take. Um, and how that he assumed, Friedkin assumes there was some tension between how Sinatra liked to work and how Frankenheimer was a perfectionist. So, you know, can you get it done on the first take? I don't know. Maybe that requires a lot of rehearsal, but that's not necessarily um, something Frankenheimer, I mean, uh, Friedkin can speak to directly but that's how he assumed it would be but he has a lot of great things to say about it it's just him sort of gushing about the movie um then we have an outtake from that frankenheimer interview it's the phone call outtake it's about 30 seconds a phone goes off during his interview and he makes a joke with regards to mentoring candidate that's pretty funny and then there's how to get shot outtake which is an outtake from the angela lansbury uh interview where she talks about being hit by a hunting rifle at a great distance and sort of her process for figuring out how uh, physiologically a body would react to that. Um, And she goes into a little detail about it, and that's pretty neat. Um, But like I said, just a great-looking transfer, and that commentary, while it can be sparse, definitely is full of lots of neat tidbits with Frankenheimer speaking about the themes of the film, the real life inspirations and the filmmaking. And, uh, I really love it. So really happy to have both Ronan and the Manchurian candidates on 4k from Kino Lorber, both definitely recommended and worth picking up. So, uh, that will do it for this round. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.